and topples over. With the pass to his flocks, I turn back and grab Merrick beneath the arms, dragging him across the smooth floor. I think I already have Queen Angry. Queen Angry. Scared. Yeah, I have it. As we burst out of the warehouse, the energy it takes to drag Merrick soon exhausts me, and I quickly realize I haven't completely thought this plan through. Looks like I was supposed to sneak into the warehouse so he would still have energy. The sun glares off a nearby car, and I glance at it, noticing the key is dangling in the ignition. Must be one of Walton's. I've come this far, borrowing his car isn't going to make things any worse. With my remaining strength, I drag Mirk to the car and we manage to get him onto the back seat. I start the engine, back, in, back out of the parking lot, and hit drive for the beach. Back in the water, I finally have a moment to catch my breath. Merrick hasn't said a word since we left the hair warehouse and his gaze rarely meets mine. <laughs> a good growing moment with my hiccup I couldn't leave you there. I didn't know what he'd do to you. I'm grateful for you bring me back. It's just... Without the artifact, I'm worried saving my life would have been for nothing. Well, will find us now anyway. We're so the artifact, and we'll never find it. He looks at me, sadness so screaming back into his face and tugging down his lips. I just need some time to think. He swims away, obviously still weakened from the transformation. I understand what not having the artifact means, but I'm not going to just sit around and sulk. I'm going to get it back. It's dark by the time I make it back to the warehouse, the parking lot outside empty. So I should have gone with this choice in the first place, huh? I see. The moonlight bounces from the windows, the shutters hiding all what we is in. I tiptoe towards the door, suspicious but thankful that the doors are unlocked. Empty in here, too. I head further into the warehouse, careful to mind my steps and avoid tripping over anything in the light of the electric lights. The dim flitter, flickering casts shadow everywhere, and my nerves are shredded as I jump at each one. It's only a few more steps find I find, before I find the artifact. It's set up. It's. Me? It's. Shit. Damn. It's sat on a crate, unguarded, and not even packed. If I had spidey senses, they'd be tingling right about now. Check for alarms. This looks too easy, so I search around, feeling along the edges of the box. Sure enough, there's a thin piece of wire leading from a hidden plate beneath the shell. I'm not an expert at disarming alarm systems. In fact, I might even have begin at all. But still, I yank at the wire and hoping that will be enough. It pulls free of the plate under the artifact. I wait for the alarm. But nothing happens. With a relief sigh, I grab the artifacts off the crate and sprint towards the door, wondering if a life of spy might be a future career option. But who knows, he might be living outside this someday. Mm -hmm. Unhappy, but yeah. Wait. Like, non are scared. Oh! Oh, here it is, right there. I can't believe it! You got the artifact back! Of course I did. Oh, so it's still a good ending, huh? We both smile at each other, his happiness and gratitude so strong I can feel it like waves rolling off of him. We're going to have to hide the artifact. I nod in agreement. Put it in the cavern. Just put it in the cavern. The cavern. Or in that dark place with the purple crystals. Walton won't find up and he didn't find yet. Or you. Oh! I know the perfect place. Is it the places I listed? Is it the places with the pearl crystals? Am I right? Am I right? Follow me. He swims away and I follow close behind. When we reach a rocky underwater cave entrance, Merrick asks me to close my eyes. Oh, no, it's a completely different place. I do as he asks, feeling his fingers wrap around mine to lead me inside. Okay, you can open it now. Ooh. The underwater cave is tinted green, the sun reaching through a small entrance hole in the wall behind us. Small colorful fish start to this vibrant strands of seaweed, and the rocks are covered in what seems like a metal fluted coral. It's called the Emerald Cave. Okay, name for it. Only my people know about it. What well, we will never find the artifact down here. Merrick swims over to a small rocky outcrop, sliding the artifact beneath a 
a pile of pink moss picking coral. Easton's black to my side, his smile widened. I couldn't have done this without you. You wouldn't be in this mess if you didn't know me. He chuckles and I can't help but smile the joy of his after everything that has happened. If you wish what happened was wrong, I would go through it again to find a friend like you. Same. The friendship that has developed between us is unlike any I've had before, and I know it only been Yes! Yes! Friendship root! Yes! Yes! As we swim back to the surface, the moon shimmering high above the waves, my curious <laughs> I did it again. My curiosity wins out on a question that's been lingering on my mind for some time. When we first met, you told me that a human turned into a merman. Yes. Do you really not know how it happened? Not really. All I know is that the artifact produces a pearl every couple of decades, and when someone consumes that pearl, it turns into either human or mouse. That's it? He laughs at my obvious shock. Yes, that's all it takes. And you people just have a stockpile of pearls in case? No, every time a pearl is produced, it's given to the next world person to be burned. See? He gestures to the pearl. Of course. So subtle. <laughs> but he should give that to someone he follows in love with. But this is a friendship fruit. Friendship fruit. Friendship fruit. But maybe years from now, they can fall in love. Right now. Friendship. <clears throat> I'm ruining the moment again. He gestures to the pearl that's entwined on seaweed like a bracelet around his wrist. This is one of those pearls. We only get one, and we can either use it for ourselves or give it to someone else. Though that guy was the last time it happened, that was years ago. Though I still have a million questions on the subject, the chill of the water saves through my suit and I speed up my pace to reach it to... to reach it to the surface. Friend, you can hug. That'd be nice. I swim. <laughs> <laughs> You're narrating what you're doing, okay? Okay. Yeah. Great. I swim close and pull up the man to me. <laughs> you're narrating your actions. He tenses for a minute before wrapping his arms around me and chuckling. Good night. See you tomorrow. After dressing, I glance over the dark waters for a moment, enjoying the peace of the ocean and the salty spray that whips around me. There are the quiet sounds of footsteps from others by ignoring them, simply enjoying the moment. Wahoo? Huh? What the? Oh no, it is a bad end! It's a bad end! An arm arcs around me, and as I try to struggle, another hand grips my wrist. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna save real quick because I really don't know. I'm gonna save this for myself, maybe? Or maybe I'm actually gonna cheat. Okay, I save, return. I think this does. My body pieces beneath the man's grasp. My voice stolen from me as fear grips like a my throat. I stay still. He might let me go if I do nothing to attack myself. Ah, oh, darn it! Sorry, I'm not gonna read that part. Ugh. What? It's still going? Wake slowly, pounding in pain, beating like a rhythm at the back of my head. First open my eyes, so I blink them open gradually, and though the light that filters in my vision of soul doesn't stop the singing. Is is this Spawn's warehouse? <sighs> My question is soon answered as the man himself steps out of the doorway and company must stand by a suited gear. I thought that was just gonna end right there, like a bad end. Oh. 
You know, fly on where you want. I shifted my seat and the soft bindings wrapped around my wrist against my skin, so I still like smoke. What do you think you're doing? This is kidnapping! Yeah, so unfortunately, even I have to show up to these kinds of messages again when I want. But tell me where your mom and his friends are, and I'll help you make your job. That's what he wants? I can't let that happen. Play dumb. Finish. Play dumb. Or this. Play dumb. Or this. Yes, yeah, so if I do the play dumb, he might hit me again. Ah, whatever. You know I can't tell you that. I don't think it's a question that you can't, but more that you won't. He steps closer, his broad form blocking the lamplight and shadowing me. Tell me where he is! His angry demand sends a shudder down my spine, but I steady myself. I try not to dwell on what Walton is capable of if I don't tell him, and instead focus on keeping my composure. I really want to want to do anything, but I'm regret. He gestures behind him, his lackey swiping back his jacket to reveal the dumb glints of the gun in his side. Ooh, yeah, I guess that's bad aunt. So please just tell me what I need to know. Sir. Another suited man appears at the door right behind Walton, a frown half hidden behind thick sunglasses even in the room in the warehouse. What is it? What are your clients on the phone? Walton lets out a heavy sigh and rolls his eyes before turning to head out, pausing behind beside his lackey. Keep an eye on her. He glances over his shoulder at me. Our encounters may have been polite so far, and I don't want that to change. The lackey nods at him as Walton leaves. The expressionless mask the man wears making him seem even more robotic. Silence quickly falls over the two of us, the man leaning slightly against the crate next to him. With the room so quiet, I can hear Walton's muffled voice through the door. I found the room as just expected. It sure be long now until we lock at the merman. Want to find him? I'm sure he can be persuaded to reveal where the rest of his people are. Oh no, Merrick! I have to get out of here and warn him. I glance at the dark suited man before me and frown in thought. Um. This is. This is still a thing. This is still a thing. It's still going! Oh goodness. Um. Uh. I'm not gonna flirt. That's when has she ever been the flirt type, seriously. And he might shoot if I have her tip the chair over. Or, I guess this is the shot, but she doesn't really look sick, does not. Just go with it. Oh. I'm gonna as best I can, but it doesn't do much, so I'll do it again, only louder. Oh. The wacky glances at me. Er, more than wrong. Nothing. I don't see right. Ah! I hunch over, managing to squeeze out some tears for effect, which isn't too hard considering how terrifying. Jeez, <sighs> cry. The lackey looks forward towards me in worry, and I eye the gun in his holster, the safety strap undone. The lackey unties the bindings on my wrist, and I don't breathe for fear. He sees through my ploy. But eventually, the cloth comes away, bright red marks marring my skin where they've been. I don't hesitate to take out the man, my foot connected to his leg and setting them out from underneath him. He crashes to the ground, I wince at the thick, sickening sound his head makes as it connects with the ground. With my heart in my throat, I manage to get to my feet and spring from the warehouse, hoping to have enough adrenaline enough to get me to the beach. I rush through the docks and pat and through the streets of town, ignoring the confused stares of the people I pass. Hitting the beach, I manage to strip out of my clothes, thankful I always wear my suit beneath. Merrick? I shout the merman's name and I swim deeper into the waters where we usually meet, panic and fear straining my voice. Merrick, where are you? What's wrong? His face creases in concern as soon as he sees me, swimming up from the ruins below to meet me halfway. I'm reading so fast for a pie. It's a habit. I am sorry. <clears throat> Walton's coming. He's coming for you and your people. You have to leave. What? How do you know? 
He took me hostage to try and get me to tell him where you are. He did what? I didn't tell him anything, though. Thank you, though I'm just glad to know you're alright. You have to leave. Get your people out of here to safety. He won't stop until he's found you. He glances down for a long, quiet moment before his eyes flicker back up to meet mine. You're right. I will warn my people and relieve the... I got a burp. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I will warn my people and we will leave these shores and find a home somewhere further out to sea. He takes my hands in his, a sad smile gracing his lips. I can never repay you for everything you've done, but know you will always have mine and my people's gratitude. I couldn't have found a better friend. He pulls me into a quick hug, and I have to blink my eyes to stop the tears from falling. You're underwater, so you don't have to hide your tears, but whatever. Goodbye, Quinn. With those words, he swims away, and I watch him go, knowing that I've helped to keep him and his people safe from Lawton's clutches. I got a good ending! Yay! I got safe voyage, so I didn't need to save at all. Yay! Yeah! Uh huh. Uh huh. Na 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 that was a good ending of From Diving In Deep, unlike the former <laughs> nano I played where I got the default ending. But I actually did get the good ending on my own time, so I won't spoil how to get it. Anyway, if you want to see the romance roots, you're going to have to play for yourself. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon.